said, turn to Second Kings, and I uh, want to share some things that trust will be a source of blessing and encouragement to you. And uh, it's so important for us to learn how to live a life that will bring glory to God. And one way that we can learn more about people uh, and, and how to live a life that brings glory to God is as we look in the scriptures, we find people that did that very line. And so we can learn from them and from their example. And so I trust as we share with you the story of Elisha and how Elisha gave glory to God with his life, that uh, maybe you can take that name Elisha and put your name in place of it. And uh, when I say it, you can say something just simple like this, how Jerry gave glory to God. And uh, put your name in there and, and I trust that you'll set out to do the same thing to bring glory to God just as Elisha did. And so as we look in 2 Kings chapter 2, verses 1 through 15, and uh, as we share from God's word, I trust it be a blessing to you. As we look here in the story, and again, there's a lot of things that happened before this time. Elijah's getting ready to make his exit from this life. And uh, again, very, very unique story, and I'll just share it briefly. But he's fixing to step from this life into heaven without dying. And that is very, very unusual. Uh, another man named Enoch did the same thing. Of course, if the rapture were to take place, we would do the same thing ourselves. And of course, we know the rapture is going to take place, but wouldn't it be nice if it took place today and then we just skip all this and uh, you know step into the glory with the Lord. So again, as we look at this, I trust it will help you. And we see this man, Elisha, he lived in times that were very much like our times. Uh, there was a lot of wickedness. There was a lot of, for lack of a better description, bad politicians, leaders that were uh, in it for themselves instead of in it for helping the people and bringing people to a better knowledge of God. And we said, this is what he lived. And so again, uh, they, they were going through famines. They were going through earthquakes. They were going through all sorts of frightening things that were happening in the world. And yet he brought glory to God. So what I'm trying to say, we can use all sorts of excuses. Say, well, I can't really bring glory to God because if I live for God, this is what's going to happen. And this is what, you know, and, and I just can't give that up because I've got to make a living. And i got to do this and that. So we come up with all of our excuses. But here we find Elisha. And listen closely, and I hope that we can learn from him. And it came to pass when the Lord would take up Elijah into heaven by a whirlwind, that Elijah went with Elisha from Gilgal. And Elijah said unto Elisha, Tarry here, I pray thee, for the Lord hath sent me to Bethel. And Elisha said unto him, As the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. So they went down to Bethel. Several things I want to point uh, in the scriptures. Uh, each of these names that we read has a particular meaning to it. And of course, one of the first names we read is the name Gilgal. And basically, Gilgal referred to a place of separation. And I think as a Christian, if we're going to bring glory to God, we have to separate ourselves from the world and the things of the world, the things that uh, addict us, if you please. And we need to learn how to become addicted to Christ. And so here we find that he had already made that stand because it says they, they came to Gilgal, they left Gilgal, and then it says they went to Bethel. Now, I, I love the, the phrase Bethel. And uh, one of the churches I used to preach in quite often was a church in Urban, Texas, and it was called Bethel Baptist Church. And Bethel means house of God. And so I think it's really neat that when he separated himself from the world, just looking at these names from the standpoint, that the first thing they did is they went to the house of God to have a special time with the Lord. But isn't it interesting that Elijah just said, hey, you don't have to go with me. And, and folks, I think that's, that's so unique for a preacher all I said, you don't need to go with me. But uh, again, he was trying to test him to see just how much, uh, was he going to church just because of Elijah? Or was he going because he loved God? And, and that's the that time we go to church because there's somebody there and, and uh, thank God that there's somebody there that you can identify with and we'll get into that a little bit more here. But simply what I'm trying to say is that we need to go to church because that's what God wants. We need to be willing to separate from the world because that's what God wants. And again, thank God for those that set forth good examples. And I, I trust, you know, I don't know if you're aware of this, but every one of you are setting forth an example. Some of you set forth some really, really good examples, and some of you 
Well, we won't go into that, okay? <laughs> but what I'm trying to say is we're all setting examples. So those as we, we go, verse 3, And the sons of the prophets that were at Bethel came forth to Elisha, and they said unto him, Knowest not thou that the Lord will take away thy master from thy head today? And he said, Yea, I know it. Hold ye your peace. Now, this is interesting. There's not a whole lot of detail given concerning this. But here we have 50, what we would say, preacher boys today. And these preacher boys, they come to Elisha and they said, did you know that Elijah's fixing to be taken to heaven? Now, folks, I, I don't know how all this was known. And I, I know sometimes it seems like preachers do know things that other people don't know. I don't know uh, what the deal was. But they go to him. And, of course, Elijah is the assistant pastor, if you please. He's the assistant to Elijah. And so, anyhow... He said, yes, I, I know that's going to happen. And, and I think he just said, a matter of fact, but he said, yeah, I, I know that today's the day that he's going to be taken. And so again, as we look on, it says this, yea, I know it, hold ye your peace. He said, y'all don't worry about me. I'm just going to do what I think God wants me to do. And he goes, verse four, and Elijah said unto him, Elisha, tarry here, I pray thee, for the Lord hath sent me to Jericho. And he said, as the Lord liveth and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. So they came to Jericho. So now uh, Jericho was a city that was a cursed city. Uh, it was cursed because they had stood strongly against God in the beginnings. And uh, when they destroyed the city, the walls came tumbling down. And my wife and I had the privilege of being in that part of the world. And, and the walls literally fell out. And uh, so, again, God did it through a tremendous miracle. They had that victory there. And then God placed a curse upon the city of Jericho uh, because of the strong stand they made against God. But you might like remember God's grace because there in the city of Jericho, there was a harlot named Rahab. And Rahab made her living in, in the sex industry, I guess is the nicest way to say it. And of all things, she had heard about the God of Israel and how that God had delivered Israel from <laughs> Egypt, which was the most powerful uh, government in the whole world at that time. And God had delivered and had done all these great mighty works. And, and she saw what was happening and her men had said their hearts melted every time they mentioned uh, the God of Israel. And she began thinking, you know, I've heard that this God of Israel is a merciful God. And she began to call on Jehovah God. Wow. From the things that she heard. And finally, even though she was a harlot, if you please, she accepted the Jehovah God as her God. And you remember the story how the spies came to the city of Jericho and they were chasing after them. They said, we got spies here. And as they were chasing after them, they went into her house to hide. And uh, uh, it seemed like a strange thing, uh, uh, you know, two preachers hiding in a harlot's house. But anyhow, uh, they were spies in a unique situation. And, uh, and as they went into that place, she took and she hid them. And she lied again to the, the guards that came looking for them. And again, I'm not trying to condone lying, but you have to remember as a harlot, her whole life was based upon lies. I mean, and that's how she would make her living is by lying to these men and stuff like that. Uh, and, and we go on and on all that's happening there. But simply, when she finally got to talk to the two spies, she accepted the Lord. It's very clear that she became a believer. And as a result, she was saved and her whole household was saved. And when the walls fell down at Jericho, her house was on the walls, but her house didn't fall. And everyone that was in her house was saved that day. And she brought her parents in. And, and I don't know about you, but if I think in terms of parental abuse, she had to undergo it because her parents had trained her to be a harlot because of all the money that was in there. Wow, I don't know how tall. That's pretty bad. But we see that Rahab, God gave her love for her family. God gave her love for others. And everyone that was in that, that cursed city that was in her house was protected by God. The promise that was given by God's men and God honored that. And of all things, we find Rahab 
in the genealogy of Jesus Christ. <laughs> wow. Isn't that fantastic? That, that you find her, that she's a great, 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 great grandmother to Jesus Christ. Isn't it exciting what God can do and how they can reach down in, in the worst situation? How many times people say, well, I've just done too much preacher. There's just no way I could ever get saved. There's no way I could ever get right with God. It just ain't going to happen. <laughs> Isn't it great that God can do and he does wonderful things? So Jericho was a cursed city. And God said that whoever rebuilt the city, that he would lose his son uh, in the laying of the uh, foundation, and that he would lose his next son in the raising of the gates. And all those things happened. The prophecy was fulfilled. So we find him going to Jericho. And what I'm trying to say is that, that folks, you realize that if we see anybody get saved, we're reaching somebody that's been cursed because they're living under the penalty of sin. And the penalty of sin, folks, means go to hell if we don't accept God's plan. And so it's very, very clear. And so here we find them in Jericho. And again, sharing God's word with others so that they too can know Christ as their Savior. And so as we move on, notice what it says next. Verse 5, And the sons of the prophets that were at Jericho came to Elisha and said unto him, Knowest thou not that the Lord will take away thy master from thy head today? And it answered, Yea, I know it. Hold ye your peace. And folks, maybe we can compare that somewhat to today. How many times that we preach and we share with you that we believe that Jesus Christ is coming back and that we need to get ready for his coming because he could come today, right? And so if he were to come today, we need to be ready for him. And so again, do you believe that Jesus is coming? I do. And I trust that you do too. And so as we read on, notice what else it says at verse 6, And Elijah said unto him, Terry, I pray thee here, for the Lord hath sent me to Jordan. And he said, As the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. And they too went on. And fifty men of the sons of the prophets went and stood and viewed afar off, and they too stood <laughs> by Jordan. And Elijah took his mantle and wrapped it together and smote the waters, and they were divided thither and hither and thither so that they too went over on dry land. And that interest, we know about the, uh, the Red Sea opening up for Moses. We know about the uh, river opening up, the River Jordan for uh, uh, Joshua and Caleb as they went across into the Promised Land. And here we have it happening again for one man. And again, as Elijah took his mantle, which showed that he had a relationship with God, be like somebody in the military, uh, you can look at their coat and you go, oh, that guy's a general. I better salute him, you know, or that guy's just a private, you know, or whatever. But you can uh, identify them by the coat, by the, the top that they have on. You know what rank they are. You know that, well, he's Army, he's Marine, he's Navy or whatever. And so he was identified by this mantle that it was something to show that he had a special relationship with God. And because of this special relationship, God would work through him. And God used this mantle as he took it and as he, as he, if you please, as he slapped the waters, the waters opened up and both he and Elijah walked over on dry land. Wow, what an amazing night. Who needs a, <laughs> who needs a ferry boat or who needs a bridge uh, when you have God's protection and God taking care of you? Verse 9, And it came to pass when they were going over that Elijah said unto Elisha, Ask what I shall do for thee before I be taken away from thee. And Elisha said, I pray thee, let a double portion of thy spirit be upon me. Wow. This sounds like he's asking for a whole lot. But Elijah, he's watched God use Elijah. And he's been impressed with the, how God has used him over and over again. And great things have happened through the life of Elijah. And as he's seen all these things, he asked for a double portion. Now remember we pointed out that several times it would be the 50 sons of the prophets, if you please, the, uh, the preacher boys that would come. And it is interesting that they knew that Elijah was fixed to be taken up, but none of them were saying, hey, Elijah, we want to go with you too. Yeah. And you think that would have been their place. You're the religious ruler. You're the one that loves God above everything else. Uh, we want to be with you all the way up to the end. 
But instead, they just told Elisha, you know, he's going to go today. So it's like, why don't you just go ahead and do whatever you want to do yourself. Don't worry about him. He's fixing to be gone. He's fixing to be off the scene. I, I don't know what the deal was. But as we look here very clearly, we see Elisha, he said, I want a double portion. Now, to us, because of our culture, we think, well, is he just being selfish or something? No, what's the deal? Well, the oldest, the firstborn son in the Jewish family would receive a double portion of the inheritance. And I don't know if you were aware of that. And so he was looking at himself as the firstborn, if you please, son, uh, spiritual son to Elijah. And so it was proper, it was very proper for him to say, I want a double portion of your spirit. I want a double portion of what you're leaving back as your inheritance. Now, Elijah, he wasn't a wealthy man as far as the world was concerned, as far as his finances and so forth. But he was more than a wealthy man because of his relationship with God. And God gave him whatever he needed and, and so much more. God took care of him in such a wonderful way. And simply we find that Elisha said, I want that double portion. Now, where were the prophets? Where were the sons of the prophets, if you please? Where were the students of the word of God? They weren't there. And indeed, he said, I want a double portion. And so I appreciate that. He wanted to do, <laughs> that's almost unbelievable because Elijah had done so much and he said, I want to do twice as much as you've done. Wow, that's an admirable goal, is it not? And so as we read on, this is what he says here. Verse 10, and this is Elisha talking. He says, Elijah says, Thou hast asked a hard thing. Nevertheless, if thou shalt see me when I am taken from thee, it shall be so unto thee. But if not, it shall not be so. So now we have the first really encouraging words coming from Elijah. He said, if you see me when I'm taken up, it will come to pass, and you will receive a double portion of my spirit in your life. Wow. So now we see a little more reason for Elisha to hang on to him because he wants to be used of God. And so, again, clearly he defines it again. Here's what you need to do. Here's the requirement. Stick close to me. And, folks, I think it's important for us to find somebody that has a relationship with God Stick close to them. Learn from them. And, and it's amazing how, uh, as God blesses certain people, how that other people in their circle also get blessed. But notice as we read on, verse 11, And it came to pass, as they still went on and talked, that, behold, there appeared a chariot of fire, and the horses of fire, and a part of them both asunder, and Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. And Elijah saw it, and he cried, My father, my father, the chariot of Israel, the horsemen thereof. And he saw him no more, and he took hold of his clothes, and he rented the pieces, and he took up also the mantle of Elijah that fell from him, and went back and stood by the bank of Jordan. And he took the mantle of Elijah that fell from him, and he smote the waters and said, Where is the Lord God of Elijah? And when he had also had smitten the waters, they parted hither and thither, and Elijah went over. Verse 15, And when the sons of the prophets which were to view at Jericho saw him, they said, The spirit of Elijah doth rest upon Elisha. And they came to meet him and bowed themselves to the ground before him. So what a tremendous story of, and maybe some that you've heard people use as a, maybe a senior pastor in a church. Uh, as he turns it over to a younger man to take over the church, uh, they refer to passing the mantle on, and that's where this comes from, right here. Uh, so in other words, passing on the authority of becoming the next pastor. And so again, we see all this as it takes place here, how Elisha gave glory to God and how God was able to use him. So before we go any further, we want to go to the Lord and prayer asking his uh, special blessings uh, upon our services. And I'd like to ask Brother Richard, if you would, would you pray for us, Richard? Sure. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you and praise you, Lord, for your many blessings to us, Lord. 
Thank you that the doors of this church have remained open. That we may come together and worship you, Lord. Pray for Amplify Pastor's lips, Lord, as he made his message this morning, Lord. Help to get Brother Jerry out of the road, Lord, so that we can hear your message. Help us to find it to our hearts, Lord, and be able to take it out and share it with others, Lord. We continue to pray for all those who are sick and hurting, Lord. Just uh, thank you again for all this that we're able to make every day, Lord. Open our hearts and hear this message. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 As we look, here's several points that we want to share with you at this time. And I, I trust that they will help us and encourage us. And I, I, I think it would be so great for us to be willing to take on the spirit of Elisha, if you please. Uh, John the Baptist said they, they credited him with having that same spirit upon him. And so it's not unusual, if you please, for a Baptist to have the spirit of Elisha upon him. Uh, Anyhow, but what I'm trying to say is we look here in the scriptures, some things that we can learn, that we can glean. But first of all, I want you to note that Elijah and Elisha, they had a, a special love for the house of God. And I think it's very, very important for us to, to come to God's house. It's important for us to come to the church and to worship with other believers. And somebody might say, well, can't we just uh, stay at our home? And the Bible even talks about uh, how that we can pray and pray. Uh, uh, that we need to go into a closet and pray. Apparently, I guess I'm dead here. <laughs> okay, sorry. I know those people kept showing that they weren't hearing me very clearly. With me having to preach five times a day, I need to guard my voice a little bit here. Okay, can y'all hear me any better now? Okay. Going down, down, going down, down a little bit. Okay, need to get it up a little higher. Okay, there we go. I'm sorry about that. All right, so I guess I need to start all over again. Uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you, DJ. You're always so thankful. Okay. So back to where we were. All right. So Elijah made much of the house of God. And I think it's important for us to love God's house, to love God's people. Uh, there's things that we can learn here that we can't learn, I don't know how to put it, on our own. But we need the fellowship with each other. It's a place that we can come and encourage each other. And I don't know about y'all, but uh, when I look at my, my days, I don't think there's a day that ever goes by that I don't need some sort of encouragement. And I don't know, are you the same way or is it just me? Uh, I, I like to be encouraged. And folks, let's face it, isn't it a lot easier just to be discouraged all the time? Uh, all you have to do is pick up the newspaper or turn on some uh, some some article or whatever you might want to call it on uh, TV or on your telephone or whatever it might be. And uh, there's always something depressing out there. And uh, But what I'm trying to say, we need encouragement. And coming to God's house is a place that we can come and get charged. And just as I had to have my battery changed out, because they used up the other battery. Uh, all of us, it's like our batteries, they kind of get discharged too. Sometimes they drop down really low, and so we need to either replace them or, or recharge them, right? And so when we come to church, it's a place that we can recharge and that we can encourage each other in the things of God. And it should be an exciting time as we meet together. And uh, I, I remember when I was growing up, it was always exciting that gather with my family at the dinner table <laughs> and get the child down on some good food and find out what was happening to everybody else in the family. And so that's exactly what we're doing here. Spiritually, we're chowing down what God has for us here. So we see that he emphasized, I pray thee for the Lord has sent me to Bethel as Elijah was talking to Elisha. And so I think a godly example is going to have his life centering around the church, around God's house, around God's people. And so again, very, very important that we uh, find and make a place in God's house for us to work. Elijah tested him concerning his desire to, to be in the house of God. And so again, Elijah, as he encouraged Elijah, uh, very, very important that we encourage others to come to church. And uh, last night I had a young man call me and he just simply said, Pastor, I got some people I just met here and, and uh, I hope if you'll come, maybe we can get them to come to church. And so went out there and was glad to visit with those people. And uh, hopefully we'll see them in the near future come to church. And so that's a blessing. But what I'm saying 
is Elijah uh, encouraged him to go with him and to please in one sense to church, but he wanted to go for the right reason. We come to church to learn more about God. We come to have a better relationship with God. Elijah was going to follow God with or without him. In other words, Elijah, his mentor, said, I'm going to church. I don't know what you're going to do, but I'm going to church. And folks, we should go to church. It shouldn't be a matter of, well, I don't know. I, I don't feel so good today. Or I didn't get much rest last night. Or, man, I've had a hard week at work, and it's just been one thing after another, and I'm just so tired. And, and it's amazing how much more comfortable that bed seems on Sunday mornings. <laughs> well, you know you should be at church, you know. And uh, so I'm trying to remember, I uh, think Caleb talks about uh, going to the, the, the Baptist Church of Slumber or something. Baptist. Bedside Baptist, okay? And so anyhow, uh, it's, it's just face it. It's easier not to come to church. I mean, as a woman, you have to get up and put on your makeup. And I'm so thankful you go, no, I didn't say I did it. Okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, that's a little pain on the side. But, oh, I didn't say that either. Did I? Okay, move along here. But what I'm trying to say is I know it takes something for somebody to get up and come to church and get ready to come to church. And uh, so uh, thank the Lord that you came, and I hope that you feel like it, it was worth it. And uh, I think it's important for us to dress up for the Lord and, uh, and come in such a way that he knows that we love him and that we want to put forth our best effort for him. But then know something else. Elijah is informed by Elisha that he is going to stick with him. In other words, no matter what's going to happen to you today, I'm going to stick with you. And folks, I'm so glad that Jesus sticks with me wherever I go, okay? But there's a lot of times, and I hate to say it, I hate to make this confession, but there's a lot of times I don't stick with him. Mm -hmm. I get off doing my own thing and thinking about, yeah, I need to do the other one. Yeah. And, and, and I do something I really shouldn't be doing, and as a result, I've stepped away from God. And that's a dangerous place to be away from God. But I love it when I'm right next to God. And you read this, God loves when I'm right next to him too. And, and again, I'm not trying to sound... Uh, prejudice or you know that I, I'm preferred over anybody else because that's true of every one of us God wants you right beside him all the way through everything he doesn't want to step in away from us he wants us to be as close to him as we possibly can be folks people are watching you and if you do what's right you can encourage others to do right but let's face it if we're doing wrong how are we going to encourage people to do right uh, you know uh, not just you know practice what I preach but Practice what you do preach, okay? Then Elijah had a, a living God. Folks, I'm so glad our God isn't dead. <laughs> I'm so glad that our God is alive and that our God can help us with whatever problems we might face today. I'm so glad that <laughs> we don't have to have an election over who's going to be God. Yeah. I'm so glad that we can trust our great God. And that he loves us. And I notice here in three verses, uh, immediately, here, here's the quote from Elisha. He says, as the Lord liveth. <laughs> in other words, I mean, just as sure as somebody might say, well, just as sure as the sun rises in the morning, you know, I'm going to do this or that or whatever. And then what he's saying, as the Lord liveth. In other words, there was no question in his mind. And he didn't think there was any question in anybody else's mind that the Lord liveth. And folks, I'm glad he's alive. Because he knows exactly what's happening in your life. He knows what you're going through, and he's ready, and he wants to help you through it. The second reason why God used Elijah to take Elijah's place is because Elijah had a God who was alive too. And so he saw, as Elijah lived his life, that it's very clear that he walked with God, and that God was walking through him also. So can you say, preacher, I believe God is alive? And I hope that every one of you can say, yeah, I believe God's alive. I believe that he's real. I believe that he knows what's going on, that he can see me and he knows exactly what's in my heart. Wow. Well, what's in your heart? Isn't it amazing that God knows what's in our heart and he still loves us? How many times we've been so far away from God? And, and it's sad that sometimes we can be sitting right here in a church building and you think, well, being in church, uh, once in, maybe I'm a little bit closer to God or whatever, but just being in church will make you closer to God. And sometimes you can be in church and your, your heart can be a million miles away. Maybe he's thinking about that football game. <laughs> you know? Maybe he's thinking about, oh, I hope, I 
hope I set that roast on there just right. You know, I hope I don't burn it all up. You know, <laughs> I, I, you know, our mind gets off on so many other things instead of thinking about our wonderful God that we live for. But Elisha's something else about him. You know, how many times was he given the opportunity by the preacher, if you please, by Elijah, to quit? I mean, he went ahead and just gave him an excuse. He said, uh, I'm going to go there. You can tear it here. I mean, he said to in such a, a nice and pleasant way, you can just go ahead and tear it here. And, and instead, he said, no, wherever you go, I'm going to. I'm going to stick close to you because I want to learn from you. I want to benefit from you. But you still got something that you can give me because you're still here. <laughs> and so he looked at it that way, but he refused to quit. Verse 4 says, and as the Lord liveth and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. Folks, what does it take for you not to be here? What does it take for you to not say something about God? What does it take to keep you from being a witness? Why did God use Elisha? Because he would not quit. How many times have we stopped short of God's blessings? How many times have we just said, well, the, the preacher wasn't here and I thought he'd be here, or I thought so-and-so would be here, I thought this, but it, it, it didn't happen. What does it take to keep you from coming? Why did God use Elijah? Because he wouldn't quit. Folks, how many times did we quit over just the simplest? Little, well, it's really cold out there today, you know. Or man, it's just so hot. You know, this would be a good day to go to the beach. You know, or, or whatever. Or this would be a good, you know, we look at all sorts of excuses for why we shouldn't be with God's people. But he was faithful even when discouraged by others. Isn't it funny that it, it emphasized that these 50 preacher boys, I don't know if it's the same 50 preacher boys, but they kept coming and say, hey, he's fixing to leave. He's fixing to go to full-time retirement, man. He's fixing to go to heaven. So why are you wasting your time with him? He's fixing to be gone. He didn't let that discourage him. And folks, I hate to say it, but there's a lot of preachers today that really aren't preachers. And when I say it, they're preaching everything but the truth. They're, they're preaching their own gospel, if you please, instead of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And folks, don't misunderstand me. I thank God for those that are preaching the truth and that aren't ashamed of what God has done for them and what God can do for others and that Jesus is still in the saving business. So I'm so glad that Jesus saves, folks. And I'm thankful for the preachers that share that. But again, there's some that would discourage us. Our are you a quitter? And folks, I, I think that's one thing that my father instilled in me is that, you know, don't quit. My mom was the same way. They, they just uh, wouldn't quit. They just kept on going and going, no matter what was happening to them. I remember one time somebody asked my mom. My mom had lupus. And uh, with lupus, she had uh, her arthritis and stuff would just cripple her up so much. She had a, a weak voice. And it was funny, y'all remember what was last week or the Sunday before I told you that my mom used my, my three-year-old sister to be her song leader at her Good News Clubs and uh, because her voice was just so weak and so bad. And, and it was funny because I was talking to my sister this last week. Uh, in fact, I was talking to her last night when you called me. And uh, I was talking to her Tuesday and she said, uh, Jerry, I have a, a uh, uh, child evangelism Good News Club uh, at such and such school, uh, Cumberland uh, schools there in uh, Spartan. And she said, I, I got to head out for that. So anyhow, she was real excited about going. She teaches the whole thing, runs the whole thing. And isn't that amazing? And she turned 60 yesterday. My baby sister's 60. Can you imagine that? But anyhow, but what I'm saying is uh, she and I got to talk about it. I said, you know, uh, Mom, you know, used you when he was three years old, and I think she used you in a wonderful way. She used you to lead the song services for all those kids. And, and my mom sometimes would have over a hundred children in her backyard or in her room where we had the classes. And so she'd have a lot of kids. And like I said, she has a weak, really weak voice. But anyhow, she would have her lead the songs. And I said, you know, mom really didn't have a good voice. And my sister kind of chuckled. And I said, okay, Cheryl, what's going on? So I, there's something I, I think you won't to tell me, right? She said, she said, I asked mom one time, because I noticed that she, she wouldn't sing out loud, but she would move her lips and stuff, but she wouldn't sing out loud. 
And finally, I just asked, I said, Mom, how come you don't sing out loud? And she said, because I got such a terrible voice. And my sister looked at her, Mom, you don't have a terrible voice. She said, yes, I do. And she said, no, Mom. And, and so she said, Mom, you just go ahead and sing right now, and I'll prove to you that you don't have a bad voice. And my mom started singing, and, and my sister said, I promise you, I won't laugh. And so my mom started singing, and my sister just started laughing and couldn't stop laughing because my mom's voice was just that, that way. <laughs> and so, anyhow, and she kept the mom, I'm sorry, but it, it is bad. <laughs> anyhow, but what am I trying to say? Uh, my mom makes a joyful noise to the Lord. Yes. And my sister, uh, you know, just verified that fact that she was used because my mom didn't have that voice. And so as a result, my sister is still involved in ministry 57 years later. I mean, and she's only 60, isn't that amazing? <laughs> but again, what I'm saying is we look here, my mom could have quit so many times. And I remember uh, her telling this story about a lady came up to her and that her church, uh, had her church that she had like 50 uh, toddlers in her class that she was teaching. And uh, these were basically the two and three year olds. And as she was working with them, uh, she would go and she would a lot of times would be hurting and sometimes uh, as she'd come in the buildings people had to open doors that had knobs on for stuff like that but somebody just said Mrs. Pittman you should probably be home as much as you're hurting and my mom would say well I look at it this way I, I, I could be at home and be hurting or I could come and be doing something for God still be hurting but I could be doing something for God and I choose to do something for God so I uh, appreciate it uh, testimony like that when it was so easy to quit to just keep on keeping on for God's glory and for his honor so don't quit so will you go before you say that's too much I'm stopping here and, and again how many times have we said well Lord you want me to uh, stop this habit you want me to dress differently you want me to, to memorize Bible verses? You want me to spend more time in the Bible? You, you, you want me to witness more? You want, Lord, there's only, I can only do so much. Those things, I, I, I'm afraid about that. People are going to think I'm some sort of a, a holier than thou type person. Folks, we need to do what's right. We need to do what God wants us to do. Elisha saw something else. And again, some of this overlaps a little bit. But Elisha ran with the right company. And when I say that, he stayed as close to God's man as he could. And as we look around, every time we turn around, there's those 50 uh, Bible students or, or preacher boys, whatever you want to call them. There was always a group of 50 that were close by too. And so he ran with a, a good crowd. And let's face it, there's some people that you run around with them, you know you're going to get in trouble. You know you're going to be in trouble. You know that you shouldn't be with them and go where they're going to because you'll get in trouble. But there's other people. You know that when you're with them, you'll be doing what's right and you'll be in the right place. And so here, that's exactly what Elijah did. He ran around with good people and he wouldn't get away and, and hang around with those that were, uh, I mean, he looked for those that were the closest to God out of those that were close to God. And, and I want to get this across that the prophets, or if you please, the sons of the prophets, they had a relationship with God and they were closer to God than anyone else except Elisha. Elijah was even closer. And that's who he chose to spend the main part of his time with, was with Elijah. And so folks, we need to find those that are faithful, those that are faithful servants of God and stick around those that have a relationship with God. Elijah did what Elijah did in verses 8 through 14, when they came to the river, he took the mantle and he cast it out. Of course, the river opened up and he was able to cross over on dry land, just like Elijah had done before him. Elijah was able to do the same thing. And so what God has done for others, he can do for you. Now, I think it's exciting to point this out too, that if you study the Bible and you study the life of Elijah and then you study the life of Elisha, are you ready? You'll find out that Elisha did do twice as many miracles recorded that he did over Elijah. 
Now, isn't that amazing? <laughs> he asked for double portion, and he happened to do twice as many miracles as Elisha. Wow. So what am I saying, folks? That we need to be faithful to follow the Lord and always seek to do a little bit more for him than what we're doing. And God will bless us accordingly. Elisha asked for big things, and God gave him great things that he was able to do, even raising people back to life. Wow, isn't that staggering? Things that he was able to do for God. Uh, amazing as we see God working through. And then the last thought, Elijah, he had the Spirit of God on him. And folks, I hate to say it, but I see a lot of phoniness today in religion. I see a lot of people that they they just kind of hype themselves up, uh, kind of like, a, I guess for lack of a better description, like a cheerleader uh, that doesn't really want to do cheerleading that day, but she's got to pep herself up, and so she'll go ahead and go through the acts and the actions of being uh, rah, 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 our team is great, you know, whatever. And, and I see many Christians that do the same thing, go, uh, Jesus is great, he's wonderful, wow. <laughs> you know, and, and, but what's sad is, folks, Jesus really is great. That's not sad. That's good news. And it's something that we should always be excited about. And when we let God's spirit work through us, people are going to realize that we've got something that's real and that we do have a God that's life and that he wants to work through us and help us to be a blessing to others. The same spirit that was upon Elijah, that was upon Elisha, is the same spirit that wants to be upon you. Isn't it great that the God that Elijah and Elisha were serving is the same God that we have to serve right now? <laughs> and, and yet, how many of you have seen an Elijah or Elisha running around today? And folks, being quite honest with you, I think I can do better this next week. Oh, excuse me. I think you better this week than I did last week. Okay? And, and I want to challenge you, and I hope that that's your desire too, that your desire is that I'm going to do more for Jesus this next week than I did this last week. Couldn't we all do a little more? Uh, shouldn't we do a little more for the Lord than what we did this, this last week? And, and what I'm saying is, can we do better? And I think if we're honest, we'd all say, yeah, I, I can do better. And I know it's so easy to look at others and say, well, look at so-and-so. He's only doing this or he's doing that. You know, and then it's easy to say, well, and he's a deacon in the church or he's a leader in the church or he's sons or he's a preacher or whatever. And we look at others and say, well, you know, they're, they're not, you know. Folks, we're the ones that have to give an account to God for what we do or for what we don't do. So are we going to live for Jesus or are we going to live for ourselves? So what's your relationship? with him. Do you want to be like Elijah? He saw Elijah and said, I want to be like you. <laughs> and then he said, I think I might be able to do more if I let God work through me. And so he asked for that double portion. And God blessed him. Folks, every one of us needs to be a witness for the Lord Jesus Christ. And what's exciting is every one of us can do something. Jesus this week would you stand to your feet as we begin our invitation Lord I thank you for the story of Elijah and Elisha and I know we didn't go into a whole lot of the miracles that they did and we did point out about the dividing of the river so they were able to cross some dry land but Lord there were so many fantastic things that you did through these two men that these two men stood out as the most powerful men of their generation. And Lord, help us that people can see that God is alive as they look at us and as they watch us. May they see that there's people that really believe that you are alive because you are. And Lord, how sad it is that so many that know better, but they don't do better. Lord, we've been instructed from your word how to do better and help us to follow your pattern that you set forth for us through the life of Elisha. Lord, help us to see that we need Elishas in this land today, that we need people that will be willing to stand up for the truth, 
people that would be willing to do whatever it takes to bring somebody to Jesus before it's eternally too late. Lord, help us to realize that we are in the last days and that at any time that we could be taken up from this life, find ourselves in your presence. And Lord, I know that can happen through the rapture or it can happen through death. Help us to be ready to stand up for you now. Lord, we don't know if we would be taken from this life right now our ministry on this earth will pretty well be ended. But if we have another day, or we have another year, or maybe another decade, shouldn't we be doing and living it for you and not ourselves? Help us to realize that our time is short. Whatever we do for God, we must do it now before it's eternally too late. There's souls that are in the balance Help us to do whatever it takes to make a difference. Help us to be real in our life. That our life bring glory to you. Well, we ask this in your son's name, Lord. We pray that you would be with those that have maybe never trusted you as Savior. That's the most important thing. If you have never been saved, get saved. And pray this simple prayer. Dear God, I know I've sinned. And I here now ask you to forgive me of all my sins and to come into my heart and become my Lord and my Savior. May they pray that in faith. In Jesus' name, amen. What's your relationship with the Lord? Can you identify with Elisha that you want to get in a better relationship with God's people? It's so important. It is so easy. You know what you find out? The church is made of people. And you're ready, even though we're saved, we've got a perfect salvation, we've got a perfect Savior, we've got a perfect God, we're still not perfect. <laughs> and if you know somebody that thinks they're perfect, uh, <laughs> uh, be prepared. You'll find out that they're not. so thankful that God is a forgiving God, that he is a loving God, that he is a merciful God, and that he has a wonderful plan for every one of us. There's something that you can do that no one else can do. There's some people that you can reach that no one else could reach. Okay, folks, let's strive to be like Elisha. Okay? Uh, he didn't mind being second fiddle. <laughs> because he knew he was first fiddle with God, even as second fiddle, okay? Wow, uh, so much that we can learn from God's word. We want to dismiss in prayer, and it's so good to have Bob in the back, and, and uh, I, I guess y'all had some time off there, so we're glad to see that he's still alive. He looks a little more grayer than before, but yeah. that happens, only. okay? But would you mind dismissing us in prayer, brother? <clears throat> Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for the day. We thank you for the message. <clears throat> we just ask you to undertake for all those that couldn't be here with us this morning, Lord. And all <clears throat> for our for their needs, Lord, we thank you to be back with us next week. And Lord, we just ask you to guide us as we go throughout this week, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.